Hi there, welcome back. This is another video showing a different sort of canister filter and I'm, to be honest, amazed that I haven't featured this one before. This is the All Pond Solutions 1400 EF Plus and the plus relates to the fact that it has a UV light in here. Now the equivalent filter to this is the Sun Sun 4, no, Sun Sun HW 403B. That would be exactly the same as this but sold to the likes of America and places in Asia and so on. I think you can get them in the UK as well. So they're basically exactly the same filter. Come from the same factory. One sold by Sun Sun, one sold by All Pond Solutions. And I'm sure there's other variants around the world as well. Now this is quite a well made filter. It's certainly better than the first versions that came out many years ago. It's got a very good priming knob on the top there and when you put your hand over the outlet you can actually feel the air coming out so it definitely is doing something I imagine although I've never tried it but because that depresses so far I would imagine that it would prime very well it's got a carry handle on the top the usual four clips to get it open on the top it's got an indicator light so you can see when the UV's on. On the side there it's also got a little switch. I'm not sure whether you can see that. So you can switch the UV on or off and incidentally it's a 9 watt UV which is in there. And then inside of this bucket, we've got the usual three trays. So let's have a look inside and I'll show you what comes with the filter. Because this one is brand new from a guy called Gary. Thank you very much, Gary. So first of all, water goes over the UV, down here, to the bottom of the filter. Then it rises up through the trays, through the grid, into the pump, gets pumped back to the tank. Very simple operation. So, top tray got some rings, ceramic rings. Next tray down we've got some plastic bio balls and some fine pad in the bottom, just one fine pad. And then in the bottom tray we've got carbon pad. Another carbon pad. It's very black. I don't know whether you can see that. That's better. The light's a bit better there. Two carbon pads and another fine pad. So obviously we're a few pieces missing from making this an efficient filter. And then in the bottom we've hopefully got some space to put some extra media just for primary settlement. If you look in there you can see the little fins around the outside. That means that the tray is going to sit about that far up from the bottom which will give us space to put some sort of filter media in the bottom to catch the heavy muck before it starts to rise up through the trays. Actually in this top tray I missed the fact that it's got yet another fine pad in there underneath the bag of media which of course you would take out of the bag prior to use. Okay so that's what we've got as standard that's what comes from the manufacturer. Two bags of rings plastic balls and various mechanical and chemical foam or pads. So there's three fine pads and two carbon pads. And really to be honest as far as filters go direct from the manufacturer this isn't actually bad. It's not bad at all considering the fact that this thing only costs around 75 English pounds it comes with a reasonable amount of stuff. So as far as upgrading this goes, first thing we're going to do is put some media in the bottom of here to catch the heavy muck. So when it comes down over the UV into the bottom, it traps a lot of the muck in here and saves the foams, which is going to be in the tray above, from getting clogged so quickly. And down here we can either use the plastic balls that come with the filter or we can use the rings. In this case, I'm going to use the plastic balls just for a change. And they actually fit in there perfectly. There's exactly the right amount. Right, so I've just upgraded the bottom tray by cutting 
a coarse bumpy pad, bumpy sides down to go on the bottom, a medium bumpy pad, bumpy side down to go in the middle and we're reusing one of these pads that come with the filter to go on the top. So in the bottom now, coarse, medium, fine, water will be clean before it hits the media. So that drops into the bottom, that's our bottom tray done. Incidentally, if you wanted to use the carbon, ideally that would go last, so that would be in the top of the top tray, but if you wanted to use it on the bottom tray, and there is room to do that, just, you could add it there. It's not going to make that much difference, to be honest. In fact, I think I'll put it there, just for demonstration purposes. There you go, see, fits in, perfect. So that's all our foams, so that's all our mechanical and it's also our chemical media in that bottom tray. Then the next two trays are going to be filled with media. And for the purposes of this setup, we're going to be using Biohome Ultimate Marine because Gary is going to be using this filter on a marine tank. Three kilos of it I think will fit into here, I'm guessing, and I hope I'm more or less right, because that's what I've been telling people for years. And just for anybody interested, the Ultimate Marine is, it's exactly the same structure, exactly the same size, at exactly the same porosity as the Biohome Ultimate, but instead of having trace elements fused into the structure that are suitable for freshwater bacterial processes, they act as catalysts, it's got trace elements fused into it that are more suited to marine bacteria. So it's like a really enhanced version of ordinary filter media. Now ideally this would be washed before use, but because I'm sending it back to Gary, I don't want it to be wet or producing any sort of moisture in the box when I send it back to him. They actually get a little bit more than three kilos in those two trays. See, I've got a bit of space in the top there. Of course, you could put pouches of Purigen or something if you're using it in a marine tank or anything else. You might want to use Chemi Pure Blue or whatever it is you marine guys use. Plenty of space for that in there, and you've still got three kilos of media in the filter. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. I managed to get another 300 grams in here. So in total now, we've got 3.3 kilograms of filter media. Very good. More is always better. Okay, so that's it. Fully pimped up. Now when the water comes in, it'll go over our UV light, down into the bottom of the filter, mingle around in all those balls and so on. Hopefully a lot of the heavy muck will settle out in the very bottom of the filter. Then it'll go through coarse, medium, and fine pads. Then it'll go through a carbon pad, which of course could also be on the top of the top tray. Either or, it doesn't really matter. To be honest, the carbon pad isn't... it's not exactly holding a lot of carbon, you know. Um, then it's going through two trays of filter media, 3.3 kilos in total. And hopefully I've remembered to put that in pounds along the bottom of the video when you're watching this for you guys in the US, because I know you don't work in kilograms and so on and such forth, and your guys in the US making filter videos never talk in kilos, they only ever talk in pounds, so I like to do it for both sets of viewers. Oh, perfect. Good. Well, this is a pretty well made filter, it's a decent size. Good flow rate, you know, 1400 litres an hour or that many gallons. It seems to have a very good priming system, it's got a handle on there. It's got a separate switch for the UV, which is always useful because you don't need that on all, all the time, especially if you're just setting the tank up, because ideally you don't want the UV on for at least two or three weeks just to allow the bacteria that you've added in the initial setup to flow all the way through the system. You don't want anything messing with that. And on the subject of anything messing with that, Please do not use anything which is sold as a dechlorinator or 
uh, water conditioner which messes with the ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. Let that flow through the system, let the filter sort it out. If your filter is properly set up, that's a natural system. And if you are starving it by adding the likes of a very popular one, uh, which starts with a P, that will retard the system something terrible. So instead of taking two or three weeks to set up with the, uh, um, with the aerobic bacteria, which sort out the ammonia and nitrite, you're going to be waiting six, seven, eight weeks, and then you're going to be talked into using a secondary product to try and keep adding bacteria to the system. You don't need that. Once you've added bacteria to the system initially and the fish are in, you should have a self-sustaining system. If you've got a decent sized filter, it's properly set up and the fish stock isn't absolutely insane. And you're doing regular maintenance, no matter how minimal that is. And on the subject of bacteria starter cultures and so on, I don't think you can get better than the gel balls. That's what I give away with the vast majority of the filter media that I sell. I don't give it away for the marine media because the marine version is much more expensive but I do have both types on the website, on the Filter Pro website. Link here and if my big baldy head would get out of the way, the link will be behind me as well. So as far as tank recommendations go, because if you wanted a full cycle, which is zero ammonia, zero nitrite, zero nitrate, a full cycle, not half a job, on a marine tank, we would normally recommend two kilos or 4.4 pounds of media per 100 litres or 26 US gallons. So having said that, because this is for a marine setup, this particular size of filter and amount of media for a full cycle would be suitable for a tank somewhere between 150 to 160 litres or thereabouts. Obviously if you've got live rock you can increase that tank size a little bit. If you've got more stock, heavy stock, really heavy stock, you can reduce it a little bit but it's there or thereabouts. Thanks again to Gary for sending me this and I apologise for taking a day or two more than I said I was going to take. I've had a lot to do. Now if you found this video useful, please check out the links in the video description and pinned comment. There will be a link to the Q and A page which I've greatly expanded on my website. And that's got a nation of questions and answers. So if you have anything you want to ask about filtration, chances are I've answered it there. If not, feel free to send me an email to You could put it in a comment, I may say it if it's a one or two days after upload, but unfortunately YouTube has just stopped sending me any notifications, so if it's more than one or two days after this initial upload, I probably won't see a comment, so email's best, or if you're in the UK, even better is a phone. Just phone me, ask me questions about anything, filter related, tank setup, whatever you want to ask. That is my phone number. Thanks again to Gary for sending me this, um, yeah, I hope it does well on his tank, I'm sure he'll let me know, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching, and check out the other videos in this series, because there are millions of them.